All right. Welcome back, everybody. My name is Pratesh here with Kaizen Crypto. Today, I'm joined by Chris Swenner. He is the CEO of Reach. So, Chris, thanks so much for joining us today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm really excited for our conversation today. Me too. Um, so, I guess to start things off, uh, so you are a CEO of Reach. I guess, could you give us just maybe a high level overview? Of what is Reach exactly? Yeah. So, um, so what Reach is is a, a blockchain development platform. It's aimed to um, to make blockchain development more approachable to the 20 million developers in the world. And what we've done is we've um, we've provided a programming language, a compiler, and a deploy tool to make it so that a developer can write in a high level business logic uh, to actually write their applications much quicker. Uh, it's also in a JavaScript uh, uh, syntax, so it's much more uh, more understandable when actually looking. And the compiler will take that code, it outputs the actual entire uh, backend of the the blockchain because um, because when you actually build a blockchain application, you're not really building one application; you're building multiple applications that all speak to each other. And Reach takes care of all of the moving pieces of the application. And we also do a thing called formal verification, which is mathematically proving that the output is, is going to do exactly what, you're, what the developer wanted it to. And this removes a lot of the, the safety concerns that building on the blockchain does. And of course, um, what we do is we abstract the blockchain itself away so that a developer can launch on any chain um, and just with a configuration change without having to completely rewrite their application. Wow. Wow. Very interesting. So, so you guys are actually building something that's like blockchain agnostic, really. So you can integrate with pretty much any, uh, any platform. Yeah, it's actually, um, it's not just blockchain agnostic. We, I say blockchain agnostic, but truthfully, it's more protocol agnostic. Um, because when a developer could write their application first and find out that the, that scaling is actually something that's, uh, is, is super important. So they can actually just change the configuration and output their application again and launch it on a layer two scaling platform as well. Wow. Wow. Very interesting. That is super cool. Um, Thank you. so I guess what would be the inspiration behind doing what you're doing? Uh, I mean, like what got you interested? So I've been really interested in blockchain for a long time. Um, the, I, mean, I received my first Bitcoin in 2013. And uh, I was interested in cryptocurrency for a while. And then when Ethereum was released, that really got me excited when it come, came to the, the decentralized world computer. And I, I, was, I was running a, a company um, at the time, and, but I always knew I wanted to get into blockchain. And finally, um, one of my, my friends at the time came up to me and said, I, I have an idea on how to scale a blockchain. So we um, so I was like, you know what, now's the time. So I sold off my company. I jumped into this new company, this blockchain scaling company, and we built up the scaling platform. Um, we built it up. Uh, sadly, it ended up being a failure because we found out that, that scaling is actually not today's problems. It's going to be like tomorrow's problem. But today's problem is getting more people and more use on blockchain. So we did a lot of research and found out that one of the major things that's preventing blockchain development is how hard it is to do. So we brought in uh, Jay McCarthy, uh, who's my current co-founder, to fix this problem, figure out a way to, to, um, to make it so that uh, blockchain development is, is easy and, and approachable. So he built out, out the language Alacrity, which is the, the name of the actual language that he, um, he spent, you know, he wrote about 95% of it to as an onboarding uh, solution for my last company. And then... Um, that company ended up uh, failing, um, and but I still 100% believed in in the actual the uh, the onboarding solution. So Jay came with me um, to form Reach uh, to start a new company and uh, focus purely on developer accessibility. So that's kind of where where I am today. Okay, wow. So lots of ups and downs throughout uh, throughout your journey, but uh, here we are. I know. I mean, that's, that's, that's just the last bit of it. I mean, I've been in the industry now or tech industry for 20 years and the last 10 of it has been in the startup world. So I um, have seen a lot of his success and seen a lot of failures. So I've, I've been around, around the block a few times. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So I guess, um, you know, as far as bringing on developers, cause I, I completely agree with you, you know, being able to have a way that's accessible for these developers to actually get into blockchain uh, right. You know, speaking about uh, what you're going to be doing with Cardano, um, yeah. I guess, uh, what, is, uh, what is Reach uh, aiming to do with integrating with Cardano? It's a great question. So we've been working with the, the, the Cardano Foundation for 
over a year now just talking to them about building the uh, Plutus integration so we can actually uh, to develop directly for the island as, as Charles put it. And um, it was going, uh, it's been going for a long time. And when, when, when they, uh, when the actual update, the, the, the announcement of the EVM sidechain uh, came out, that, w- that was a light bulb go. And I was like, okay, well, we don't need to actually integrate with uh, Plutus right now. It's for Cardano developers to actually start using us today because you can actually currently write applications today with great documentation. And uh, as soon as they launch that EVM sidechain, it'll launch on the Cardano blockchain. So that was great news. And I, I made a big uh, tweet about it, about, you know, we are now integrated with Cardano. Well, as soon as the, the EVM sidechain comes out. But, but developers can start building today um, on, on the Reach platform. So they are ready to be, be able to launch on day one uh, when that comes out. Nice, nice. That's really cool. Yeah, um, really talking, uh, talking about some of the applications that you're excited to see. I know for me personally, uh, you know, with what we're seeing right now with DeFi, you know, there's a whole bunch of use cases there. Um, yeah. I, I actually got a chance to uh, catch one of your previous conversations. I know you've been talking to a lot of people uh, yeah. talking about killer apps for blockchain. Yeah. Um, in your opinion, I mean, what would you say would be something like that? So, this is actually one of the things that, that I talk about a lot. Like, and people ask me, what's the next killer app? Like, what is the thing that's going to make blockchain mainstream? And my response always is, if I could tell you that, I would be a richer man. And, <laughs> and the, the truth is, is that killer apps is not something you can plan for. You cannot not predict or even know. If that was the truth, VCs wouldn't invest in 10 uh, startups hoping that one would succeed. They would just invest in the one that will succeed. Um, so, Really, what you need uh, to kind of dig down deeper is like, well, what if, if you can't predict what a killer app is, well, how do you, how do you get killer apps? And if you look back at the, the other major um, innovations of, of actually of tech, you look at the personal computer, you look at the smartphone, you look at um, cloud computing, and all of these, of these technologies existed before they became mainstream, but the, the killer app came, but the thing that came right before the killer app was was developer accessibility. Uh, Microsoft came into the personal computer space to build the, a, a operating system that provided a programming language to make it uh, to abstract the hardware away and make developers easy to write applications. Um, Apple came into the market providing an app store and a development platform that allowed developers to build something and you know, something took off. This happens time and time again, and this will happen um, again with blockchain. That's why you know I'm so bullish on what we're doing is that we are that that operating system. We are that, that, uh, the hub that's um, my goal is to monopolize all blockchain development, make it super easy for developers to build any type of blockchain application that they want and start throwing spaghetti at the wall. I mean, the one, one thing that I always say is that, um, that blockchain, blockchain will become mainstream when blockchain development becomes easy enough that people are building far apps. Like that's really one of the, the main <laughs> things is that's, that that's what we need to see. Sure, sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, building that infrastructure, right? Making it accessible to people who, you know, are interested, but they're like, you know, I don't have the experience to code in Haskell or something like that. You know, a lot of these developers, right. they've got experience in things like uh, Java, right? Python, you know, something like that. So like, that's the other thing too, is that uh, like with Plutus, um, Plutus is a, an amazing piece of technology. I mean, something the best um, PL um, uh, researchers in the world are working on Plutus. So the language itself is actually uh, really, really good. Uh, the, the issue is that the, the regular developer in the world, it, they don't really think at that low level of what Plutus sits at. So, I mean, you can think about it is that um, when a, the majority of the developers in the world, they're, they're used to writing at a much higher level that's you know, just more at business logic. With blockchain development in general, it's really required that you kind of drop down a few levels to actually think about mashing the bits together like figuring out every single transaction and making sure you put all of the guarantees on that transaction and what happens when that transaction doesn't go through. And just developers don't have time for that. They're, they're busy being creative. They're busy building those killer apps. And uh, it's up to like us to build those infrastructure, the, the infrastructure so that they can just continue doing that. That's awesome. That's awesome. So I guess as far as what the process would look like for developers who are interested um, you know, could you maybe give us a, like maybe just a walkthrough or maybe like yeah. an overview of like, what does the process look like for actually going from, 
you know, the, the documentation, right, on the, on right. the website uh, to, to actually like getting started with, you know, tinkering around with something so that they can actually start building some of these applications. Yeah, so, uh, so Jay McCarthy, my co-founder, he is also a professor. So he is actually used to writing cur curriculum. So our documentation isn't just documentation. It's not a, a list on how to actually build things with reach. Uh, we designed the actual documentation to teach, teach developers how to build blockchain applications and we use the reach as the medium. So um, our, our documentation is set up as an overview, which is a quick 30 minute read to understand really what the strengths of reach. But then the tutorial itself is not a reach tutorial, it's a blockchain development tutorial. And it's a ground up uh, learning experience where it, we, we painstakingly go through and, and describe every single line and not only what the line does, but why you're doing it. So like, why do you do a commit reveal uh, in the blockchain space, things of that sort. And then once you're actually done with the, I believe it's uh, the tutorials now an eight step process, um, you, sh you have actually have a working uh, blockchain application that you built yourself. Um, and it's, it's a great feeling. But um, we found that developers might not have the confidence to actually go build their next thing this, this next, the, for the next step. So what we did is we created um, a workshop and you know, Jay did an amazing job creating the workshops as a top down uh, learning experience. So we start with a spec. We say, okay, we're going to build a hash lock or we're going to build um, something. Oh, there, there's, there's many examples in the workshop. And um, how would you go about building this? Okay, let's actually compare our notes. Let's go to the next step. This, how would you do this? And then we kind of teach, go down. And there's multiple examples on the different types of apps that you can go there. And then also once a week, I try to do a YouTube video of giving an idea of a type of dApp you could build because, oh, you know, giving somebody to actually, um, we're using an analogy, you know, teaching, teaching somebody to fish is actually really good. Um, and you know, they can eat for the, eat for their life, but if there's not a, a, uh, a pond full of fish, there's really no point. And that's really what the idea of actually giving the ideas of the things that they can actually, um, can, uh, can build is, is my, my weekly YouTube videos. Nice, nice. That's awesome. I'm going to make sure that I leave all those links down in the description because sure. I know um, I, uh, I was checking out a few of those videos because, you know, for somebody like myself, you know, I don't necessarily have a whole lot of programming experience. So to have those resources there, you know, within the documentation and then the content yeah. you're putting out too, really cool to just be able to get some ideas for what's possible. So yeah, that's, well, uh, that's, that's the awesome. idea. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess one question I would have would be, you know, let's say, for instance, somebody was to use your platform to write a, a D app, uh, and that's uh, using the sidechain. So that's on Cardano. Uh, what does the what does the interoperability aspect look like? I mean, if if we're talking about migrating these DApps onto a blockchain, like would something that's written on Cardano be interoperable with something like with Ethereum? I mean, like how does it work, or, or vice versa? You know, Ethereum moving over to Cardano. Right. So that's the part of the, that we abstract the blockchain in a way. So as far as interoperability goes, once you write your application on Reach, um, it will run on every single chain that we're integrated with. So um, like, and then what, and then the best part is that you could write your application today. It'll run on the Ethereum sidechain, and then once we eventually um, uh, negotiate and uh, with the the foundation to build that Plutus integration. Um, those developers can actually just hit a button and it or like change the configuration. And now it's actually on Plutus, not changing any code at all. Um, and that's like the, really the key is that, and then the best part about it is that if, if there's ever a Cardano 2.0 in the future, that is a completely separate chain. Um, we would just build an integration to that. So that's uh, the, you'd be able to just take your application, all the hard work, and then it would just pour over to the new chain. Wow. Wow. So cool. I mean, there's a lot of things that I'm excited about. Uh, you know, we're going to be seeing Gogan pretty soon. And to think that developers can now actually get started, you know, they can start writing these applications. And as soon come as on, that sidechain turns on, it's, it's go yeah, time. Come on, come on over. We have a, a thriving community. Um, I mean, so we, we officially uh, released our docs in September and, and already since then um, we have had um, I haven't checked this morning, but I think around 115 developers that have gone through the, 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 the tutorial and have built an app, actual application with our product. Um, this is not downloads. This is not people like, you know, but people have built something. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's, 
it's doing pretty w- good with that just you know word of mouth in the blockchain space having that many developers it might seem like a small number but the truth is, is that when you when you look at it and there's only really like 6000 uh, blockchain developers in the world it is a pretty significant number absolutely absolutely and i'm sure that number is going to be increasing uh, as we see more people coming into the space yeah and like you know it's not just uh, developers tinkering around as well as that um one of the one of the major DEXs in Ethereum um, has contracted with us to actually rewrite their entire platform and reach as well. So, uh, the good news there is that once they're actually that's been completed, um, it'll be they'll, their DEX will be able to run on any chain that we're integrated with. Wow, that's super cool. So, for somebody like myself who's interested and in, in wanting to know more and, and get started, would you say there's any type of like prerequisites or maybe something you would suggest people brush up on a little bit if they're interested? Yeah. Uh, so get used to JavaScript. I mean, you know, take a look at JavaScript. That's, that's, there's lots of tutorials out there that kind of get you up to speed. But, and then we also kind of like, uh, we ask to, for people to, we've liked, we would like them to have actually built a full stack application before. Um, you know, um, I, we have had a few people that have, have actually cut their teeth in development um, with reach. It's, it's hard. Don't get me, get me wrong, because not only are we teaching like, you know, how to develop, but we're also t- teaching the blockchain space, but it's, it's been possible and we've got them through the tutorial. Um, so that's, that's been awesome. But uh, we, we kind of, we angle for those, those existing developers, the people that have built something on some other platform, um, because having that mindset is super important. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that's very cool. You know, I, so, are, are, so have you developed anything before? Um, well, you know, for me right now, I, I'm currently a stake pool operator on Cardano. I, I haven't necessarily had experience with building an application, um, but I, I'm really looking at these different platforms and I'm thinking to myself, you know, if I can create a stake pool, there's, there's gotta be a way for me to write a smart contract, right? Like it's, I, I do. <laughs> I t- tell you what, so you, you join our community and um, I, I promise you I'll be one of the first per- person to welcome you though and answer all of your questions that you have. So That's awesome. Don't, That's don't worry awesome. about it. We're, we're all learning here. We're all figuring things out as we go. For sure. For sure. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that the viewers of this video actually uh, have some questions for you too. So, Chris, would there be uh, any places that people can go to to find out more information? Uh, you know, what type of resources are available? Yeah. So, I mean, I always put point people to the docs first, you know, because people like to test things out, but uh, if they want to talk to a real person, want to talk to me directly, um, our discord channel is, uh, is open. Uh, you can, uh, I'll give you my, my, the link so you can put it in the description or you can just go to our website reach.sh and up in the top right, you can click on the discord icon and go th- that way. Very cool. Very cool. All right, Chris. Well, I really enjoy the conversation. Uh, any closing oh, remarks before we uh, sign off for today? Um, I just kind of reiterates how excited I am about, about being, being available for the Cardano, Cardano community. This is something that I've been wanting for a long time because me personally, not my REIT CEO hat, but me, the Chris, the Chris hats, I, I, I love Cardano. I love, love everything actually that's the, the vision that, that Charles has and the, the team that's, that's behind it. And um, I mean, it's been one of my, my hopes and dreams to actually integrate with it with uh, Cardano. So I'm, I'm glad that I'm now officially part of the actual community and I can't wait to see all of the developers that come over from the Cardano space. Awesome, awesome. Very exciting times ahead. Very cool. Well, Chris, thank you so much for taking the time. I really enjoyed the conversation today and I, I wish you all the best with your platform. Thank you so much. And I can't wait to talk to you on the uh, Discord channel. Absolutely. Can't wait to join you. Awesome. (laughs) Thanks so much, Chris. Appreciate it.